From torture in Guantanamo Bay to tough jail sentences for rioting Londoners, Russia's new human rights report covers a broad range of alleged abuses. The foreign minister's document spends 20 pages highlighting claims of torture, phone tapping and abuse by the United States government. It also scolds European Union members for mistreating religious minorities and Britain in particular for heavy sentences after the August riots. But rights groups warn that Russia may be using its report to score points against the US and deflect criticism about its own problems. Its report says President Barack Obama has failed to shut the military prison at Guantanamo Bay and accuses the White House of sheltering CIA agents from prosecution. It accuses the U.S. of a double standard and says the reality for victims of American rights abuses is far from the ideals proclaimed by Washington. Similar suggestions are levelled against British officials who, the report says, have repeatedly had to explain themselves for alleged violations. Russian researchers highlight allegations of abuse in the wake of London's summertime riots, as this following extract reveals. In relation to the reaction to the riots in August, the suppression by law enforcement authorities and automatic court sentences for those who took part in the riots, human rights activists have accused the authorities of undermining the principle of the division of powers and also of politicising criminal court proceedings. A British government spokesman said it takes all legitimate allegations of human rights abuses seriously and expects other governments to do the same. US officials said global rights reports can be a useful mechanism. But activists accuse Russia of using human rights as a diplomatic stick with which to beat its Western rivals. The report focuses on the US and EU, but fails to tackle alleged violations in allies, such as China or Syria, they say. The Moscow Helsinki Group, a Russian rights body, says Russia is trying to counter Western criticism over alleged abuses within its own borders. Activists routinely criticise Russia's record, from killings of journalists to curbing freedom of expression and ongoing violations in the war-torn North Caucasus. Every year since 1976, the US State Department has published a detailed report on the state of human rights around the world, often with scathing analyses of abuses in Russia. This month, U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton angered Prime Minister Vladimir Putin by suggesting that Russia's parliamentary elections were neither free nor fair. For an analysis of the Russian report, I'm joined on the telephone by Ludmila Alexeeva, a founding member of the Moscow Helsinki Group. Ludmila, what are your thoughts on the document? Of course, they have right to do it because the situation with human rights in any country is not internal affair, it's international affair. But it's very funny that Russian bureaucrats describe situation in the United States and concern about situation with human rights in the United States because the best way would be to be concerned about situation with human rights in Russia, which is much worse than the United States. What do you see as so problematic about the human rights situation in Russia? Are you thinking about the recent protests against vote rigging in the parliamentary elections? Of course, of course. Now our civil society protested very actively against falsification of elections results. And of course, I participate in this protest. Are you worried about the politicisation of human rights reports? For example, do you think that the Russian report is just a way to diplomatically get back at the United States? It's absolutely clear because they write only about the situation in the United States. It's not interesting for them situation with human rights in another country. Why do they don't write about the situation with human rights in Syria, for example, when people were killed by police and uh, military? Uh, they don't interesting in only against United States. Of course, this is a diplomatic step. 
That was Ludmila Alexeeva from the Moscow Helsinki Group.